Before there were rock stars, there was Charles Dickens. He was the first to popularize the series, which now more than ever is in the public zeitgeist. Soap operas to The Walking Dead to countless streaming series on Netflix and elsewhere are using the formula Dickens popularized. Much like the Beatles who came many years after him, when he arrived to America on his first visit, he was greeted with a mass collection of admiration. On Valentine's Day, New York threw one of its grandest events to date, a ball in the honor of the renowned English novelist Charles Dickens. At only 30 years old, Dickens had already achieved global fame through his works such as Oliver Twist and Pickwick Papers. In order to honor the illustrious visitor, the cream of New York society hired the Park Theater, the grandest venue in the city, and adorned it with wreaths and paintings. On his trip, Dickens was eager to find out if American democracy had progressed from the class-ridden Victorian England. As he entered the theater with around 3,000 guests, he spotted a bust of himself hanging from one of the balconies, with an eagle appearing to soar over his head. He and his wife, Catherine, then danced for the majority of the night. However, the unwavering admiration of the American fans soon became overwhelming for the committed social reformer. If I turn into the street, I am followed by the multitude, Dickens complained in a letter. I can't drink a glass of water without having a hundred people looking down my throat when I open my mouth to swallow. Washington may be called the headquarters of tobacco-tinted saliva, Dickens fumed in American notes. The thing itself is an exaggeration of nastiness, which cannot be outdone. As for the politicians, Dickens concluded that, like everyone else in America, they were motivated by money not ideals. I am disappointed, he wrote in a famous letter. This is not the republic of my imagination. Washington, Dickens blasted in American notes, was the home of the despicable trickery at elections, underhanded tamperings with public officers, and cowardly attacks upon opponents, with newspapers for shields and hired pens for daggers. Edgar Allan Poe, on the other hand, was nearly destitute scraping by on being an editor and literary critic for various publications. Poe was desperate to get published in London, thinking that the only way to be legitimized was to be at knowledge overseas, where most of his influences were derived. Poe sent Dickens some books, probably the two volumes of his Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque. Poe also sent some papers which Dickens said he looked at more particularly. It is likely that one of the papers was a review of his first four chapters of Barnaby Rudge, and the other was most certainly a review of the entire novel. The second review was mentioned in Dickens' invitation. It is possible that Poe intentionally released a review to be around when Dickens was in the United States, and it was announced months prior. Whatever the case, Poe wanted Dickens to take note of the review as it could possibly help him get tales of the grotesque and arabesque published in London. Shortly before Dickens came to America, he wrote a letter to Poe accepting his invitation to meet. My dear sir, I shall be very glad to see you whenever you will do me the favor to call. I think I am more likely to be in the way between half past eleven and twelve than at any other time. I have glanced over the books you have been so kind as to send me, and more particularly at the papers to which you called my attention. I have the greater pleasure in expressing my desire to see you on this account. Apropos of the construction of Caleb Williams, do you know that Godwin wrote it backwards? The last volume first, and that when he had produced the hunting down of Caleb, and the catastrophe, he waited for months, casting about for a means of accounting for what he had done. Faithfully yours always, Charles Dickens. The day of the interview, Poe asked Dickens for a favor. He wanted him to help him find publishers in England. This was the only way for an American writer to be recognized as a successful literary man in his own country. And when Dickens returned to England, he attempted to do his best to assist. Dickens informed Poe for months afterwards that he attempted to fulfill his demand that was initially stated verbally and then in writing. Dear Sir, by some strange accident, I presume it must have been through some mistake on the part of Mr. Putnam in the great quantity of business he had to arrange for me. I have never been able to find among my papers, since I came to England, the letter you wrote to me at New York. 
but I read it there, and think I am correct in believing that it charged me with no other mission than that which you had already entrusted to me by word of mouth. Believe me that it never, for a moment, escaped my recollection, and that I have done all in my power to bring it to a successful issue, I regret to say, in vain. I should have forwarded you the accompanying letter from Mr. Moxon before now, but that I have delayed doing so in the hope that some other channel for the publication of our book on this side of the water would present itself to me. I am, however, unable to report any success. I have mentioned it to publishers with whom I have influence, but they have, one and all, declined the venture. And the only consolation I can give you is that I do not believe any collection of detached pieces by an unknown writer, even though he were an Englishman, would be at all likely to find a publisher in this metropolis just now. Do not for a moment suppose that I have ever thought of you but with a pleasant recollection, and that I am not at all times prepared to forward your views in this country, if I can. Faithfully yours. Charles Dickens In the meeting Poe read Emerson to Dickens. However, just two months prior to the meeting, Poe had criticized Emerson, suggesting that he had no admiration for Emerson as a poet. His love of the obscure does not prevent him from the composition of occasional poems in which beauty is apparent by flashes. It could be he was pandering to Dickens knowing that Emerson was a friend of Dickens. When Dickens arrived in Boston, Emerson refused to partake in the mob worship, feeling overwhelmed by the planned and unplanned engagement Dickens was unable to visit Emerson in Concord. In one of his interviews with Poe, Dickens likely expressed his curiosity about the sage of Concord, likely due to his admiration of Carlyle, who admired Emerson. Poe might have taken the opportunity to read out the poem to the humble bee. Dickens must have been pleasantly surprised to find out that in addition to an essayist, Emerson was also a poet. And Poe must have been pleased to surprise Dickens Later, Poe was infuriated when he read what he believed was a review of his work by Dickens. Dickens was believed to say, He approaches the spirit of Tennyson more closely than any of them with metrical limitation. The passages have a spirituality in them usually denied to imitators, who rarely possess the property recently discovered in the Mockingbirds, a solitary note of their own. The accusations of imitation greatly disturb Poe particularly because of his notoriety as an exposer of imitators and plagiarists, Poe felt certain that Dickens was the writer of the review and vented his frustration to him in a letter. In response, Dickens politely denied it in what was to be the last correspondence they exchanged. Dear Sir, Although I have not received your volume, I avail myself of a leisure moment to thank you for the gift of it. In reference to your proposal, as regards the daily news, I beg to assure you that I am not in any way connected with the editorship or current management of that paper. I have an interest in it, and write such papers for it as I attach my name to. This is the whole amount of my connection with the journal. Any such proposition as yours, therefore, must be addressed to the editor. I do not know for certain how that gentleman might regard it, but I should say that he probably has as many correspondents in America and elsewhere, as the paper can afford space to. Faithfully yours, Charles Dickens At their gathering, Dickens revealed a portrait of his beloved pet raven, Grip. The raven had passed away the year before, and Dickens had it stuffed and displayed by a taxidermist. Grip has become the most famous bird in the history of literature. Not only did he inspire the raven companion of the main character in Barnaby Rudge, but he was also an inspiration to Edgar Allan Poe when he wrote The Raven. In conclusion, we will never fully know everything discussed in their meeting, and the letters that Poe wrote don't exist anymore. However, based on what Poe said about Dickens' works, we can safely say first, that Poe admired Dickens till the end of his days, and second, a couple of Poe's works were very much inspired by Dickens. Until next time, this has been The Narrative Art.